What's up everybody? It's Lexi D here coming to y'all with another video. This one was actually inspired by one of you, my lovely viewers. They left me a comment on my channel. I'm going to read the comment, but essentially the gist of it was about finances and me talking about my experience with finances and how I budget and all of that. So if you want to hear more, then keep watching and let's get started. So Mahi says, and um, Mahi left a comment on my age 25 lessons learned and goal review video. So if you wanna see that video, I'll have that linked below. But Mahi says, hi Lexi, as a recent college graduate, I don't know much about being financially smart. Some of these questions are very silly. That is because I never had a family member that can explain these things to me. I'm the first in my family to have went to college. Questions are if I get an offering for a job position, should I turn it down if it is lower than the accepted yearly income for my major? What is a 401k even, or what are taxes? What is good credit? And in terms of its use of buying a house or a car, I came from a poor family. 60K is a lot for an income for me, just imagining it. But for some, it is entry level minimum payment. I mean, is it not enough to live comfortably with that payment or will I have more expenses in the future? What type of benefits matter when applying for a job? Some companies have insurance or education reimbursement, stuff like that. How do I know a company can offer me these things? So many questions. Would love you can, if you can make a video surrounding these, these questions. I know I could Google all of these questions, but I only wanted your video since you explain things so well and make it so relatable. Well, thank you, Mahi, for the lovely comment. This was actually a really great topic for me to talk about. And I know you left this comment about three months ago. And honestly, I was chewing on this topic a little bit. First off, I wrote myself a note to try to capture the gist of what you were asking because it was a lot of questions, but they're all kind of related in terms of finances. And I feel like this is a very relevant uh, topic to talk about just because it's relevant for everybody. Everybody has to deal with finances in one way, shape or another. And so it can all, it can be something that can be quite overwhelming if you've never had somebody to actually guide you through it, especially when you are a recent college graduate, you know, and if you have loans and all of that. So I do want to first put out a disclaimer that I am not a, um, I was gonna say money professional. I don't, <laughs> I'm not a finance professional. There we go. I'm not in the finance industry, but I do know a little something, something when it comes to finances. I do live on my own. I do um, have my own car. You know, I'm working at a large company, you know, so there's, there's the questions that Mahi is asking me are very, are very much questions that I feel like I can relate to and I can give you all some insight onto. The company that I work for provides us total compensation and so they provide us a salary healthcare, eye care, what else? Life insurance, um, they don't provide us car insurance though. They do provide us with a 401k. 401k is basically a savings plan for retirement. I don't know what the K stands for, I just know that that's what it is. And a, lar a lot of large companies offer it. And so in my case, they, um, they match the first 6%. And so it is up to me to elect to input some of my money before I am taxed put that money into a 401k. And that is something that is very critical if you are someone who is considering wanting to retire and not have to work until you die. You have to start planning for retirement right now. It's not something that you can think about even when you're like 35. It's something you wanna think about as soon as you start making money, think about saving, thinking, no matter if you're going to be in a large company or not, some companies offer other plans. If you're working for yourself, I think there's like a four something B. I'm not sure of all of it, but there's definitely options out there that you can explore for saving for yourself for, for retirement. I'm very fortunate to witness both of my parents. My dad has already retired. My mom is going to retire next year. She tells me every single time that we talk, she's looking forward to retirement. And so they've been very integral in kind of teaching me what I do know about finances and always kind of honing in on saving and the importance of saving. So the other question, um, what kind of relates to, the other question that relates to this that Mahi was asking was, how do I know that I'm making enough money? How do I know that this is a good offer? And so a good way to know if the company that you're applying for is actually giving you a good offer is to do a whole bunch of comparisons. You do not have to say yes to the first company that chooses you. I know when I first graduated college, I kind of just felt like so lucky to find a job. And I mean, there is some kind of validity in that. It's not necessarily easy to find a job these days, but at the same time, you have to be an advocate for yourself. 
think of interviewing kind of like dating. You're gonna try to find the best fit for you. And so the best fit for you is not necessarily going to be, you know, um, he does this for a living. It's gonna be a whole, uh, a whole package, right? It's gonna be, what is it that this person, how, is this, how does this person make you feel? Uh, what does this person have in mind for the future? Are they interested in you? A whole bunch of things. The same thing comes with when you're actually thinking about a job. It's not just the salary, it's the benefits that they offer. As Mahi mentioned, some uh, companies provide, uh, what is it? They provide education reimbursement. I know that my company does that up to a certain limit. So depending on what you're looking for in your life, if you're someone who wants to go back for more education, then that's something that you also want to take into account. The environment around you, just because you're making, you know, necessarily, you're making a lot of money doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to like your job. And so if you can, before you even, before the interview is over, I know I'm going on a little bit of a tangent here, but I think it all kind of relates. Ask the questions of what is a typical day like here for me in this position? What are the expectations? You know, what is the company culture like? Now, they may not be able to give you a certain answer into into what company culture is. I feel like with culture, it's something that's more so kind of experienced. But I still feel like if you ask these questions, it can kind of give you a better understanding of what the job is going to be like. And therefore, when you do receive your offer, you can have something to kind of think about more so than just the dollar amount. Money does not it is not equivalent to happiness. And so you're going to have to definitely exercise your options, interview with multiple companies, see who else is see what else they're offering. If you have uh, if you have mentors, talk to them and ask them what is a good salary that I should be looking out for. Also, when it comes to thinking about the, the dollar amount, again, this comes back to what is going to work for you, right? So depending on when you're lit where you're living at what state what city then that can dictate what your income might need to be if you want to live comfortably then you might i don't know how much money you would need right like living in la i'll say this a one bedroom apartment is about uh maybe like 21 to 2200 and i'm talking about like the amenities and you got your laundry and you got a pool downstairs and all that kind of stuff one that doesn't have those kind of amenities is still going to run you maybe like eighteen hundred dollars if you want to be in a safe area. So that can be kind of, that can be really expensive. So you have to take into account when you're thinking about uh, what the job is going to offer you. Take into account what you anticipate your expenses would your expenses will be for each month. And so in my case, I like to utilize Excel and I estimate all of my costs for the month. So I have what's called fixed costs and variable costs. Fixed costs are gonna be like my income or my income. Fixed costs are going to be like my rent, uh, my car payment, things that are not going to change month by month. Variable costs are going to be things like food or um, clothing. I do have a budget for clothing. I believe in budgeting for every everything pretty much so you can know exactly where your money is going and so that you can know kind of where um where there's opportunities for growth and where you can save more i i actually include saving within my budget so that i'm not even thinking like oh i have all these things i need to pay what you know am i going to save this month or not no saving is considered an expense in my eyes because even though i have my 401k 401k savings. I also have my savings in just my regular bank that I like to have for if I'm going to go on vacation, if I want to save up for insurance, for my car insurance beforehand. That's something that's very helpful too. So I would definitely say to utilize an Excel spreadsheet and lay out exactly what you think is going to be your cost for the month and then go from there and see, you know, kind of what the offers are that the jobs are giving to you.